praise the Lord, saints. Give God all the praise. We worship him this morning. We magnify his name. On this morning, as we open our service, I'm going to ask all those who are willing and able, if you would stand to your feet and join us as we go before the Lord in prayer on this morning. Let us bow our heads, close our eyes. For those who are willing, lift your hands. But most important of all, lift your voices as we go before the Lord on this morning. Father, we come this morning joining our voices with all those around the nation and around the world who are calling on the name of Jesus. Father, this morning we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory. We magnify you for your presence that is here right now. We thank you and praise you for what you're going to do in this service. Father, we pause to take time to pray for all those who are grieving over lo lost loved ones, over the situation in Buffalo, New York, in Ukraine, around the world where suffering is prevalent. We pray for a spirit of peace this morning. Move by your power and by your spirit. Bring peace to the hearts and the minds of those who are weeping and crying over lost ones, over tragedy, Father God, over war, over loss, over sickness, and over disease. And now we focus on this house. We pray that you will be exalted. We pray that you will be glorified. We pray that you will step in. Anoint the speaker. Let your anointing fall. We pray for healing. We pray for deliverance. We pray for salvation. We pray for minds to be set free. We pray that your perfect will will be done in our lives. We lift our voice. We put our hands together. We magnify you this morning, Father. You are worthy, worthy to be praised. And we glorify you this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. In the name of Jesus. morning and welcome to Calvary. We are so glad that you are here to worship the Lord with us today. He is a good God. He has been a gracious God. He has been a faithful God. He is the one and true living King and we magnify him today here at Calvary. We are so excited for our online visitors that you have chosen to worship with us today. We're asking that you become an internet evangelist and share this worship and the word experience with your friends and your family. We have just a few exciting things that are coming up this week at Calvary. On Thursday, His and Her Place is back, our small group for men and women, and we are introducing our space for our youth and young adults up to age 40 years old. We are excited about that beginning this Thursday, May 19th, and every third Thursday, immediately following sanctuary prayer beginning at 7.15 p.m. And the women's in ministry would like to invite all ladies to the ladies' tea party Saturday, May the 21st, from 11.30 to 1.30 p.m. We are encouraging you to wear your tea party attire. And then on Sunday, May 22nd, is family day. We are going bowling as a family. This will be the first time in a few years that we have been able to fellowship together and have a little fun as a family. So next Sunday at 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. at Camelot Lanes. Tickets are on sale now, immediately following morning worship, or you can purchase your ticket at the door. Now, as Pastor says, clear your hearts and your minds. For those of you online, we want you to put your breakfast down as join us as we begin to worship the Lord together. Praise the Lord, everybody. Can we just get a couple of people in the room to rise to your feet and worship our wonderful God this morning? We've come to give him every praise because he deserves it. Amen. Every praise is to our God. Hallelujah. Everybody clap your hands. Glory to God. We've just come to love on the Savior this morning. Hallelujah. Here we go. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every word of worship. Every word of worship. 
belongs to God. We're going to continue to sing hallelujah. And we're going to continue to sing, Lord, I bless you because all the glory belongs to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. Say, my hallelujah, my hallelujah belongs, belongs to you. To you. you deserve it. You deserve it. Every Worship, say my hallelujah.
of triumph if the Lord has blessed you to be able to stand on your feet I want you to stand on your feet in the presence of the Lord and move out from that section where you're sitting and go tell three other worshipers there is power in the name of Jesus Oh, glory, oh, glory, oh, glory. There is power in the name of Jesus. And wherever you're watching this morning in the United States and around the world, wherefore God hath highly exalted him and given him a name, that at the name of Jesus, Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. Is he your Lord? To the glory of God the Father. We've been singing great songs of worship and praise, more of a contemporary nature, but this is an apostolic Pentecostal church. So I'm gonna go back for just about two or three minutes to the roots of the apostolic church, the blood song still carry great spiritual weight, power, and authority. We're going to lift up one of the great blood songs of the church, and I want you to lift your voice and clap your hands, and let's go a little higher in our praise. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There is power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There is wonderful power in the There is power, wonder working power in the blood. Hallelujah, there is power. Let's go a little further. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Come on. There to my heart was the blood. I'm singing glory. I'm singing glory. I want to hear you clap your hands here. Glory to it. And there. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have, we have a victory. 
stop that right there. Now, one of the differences between apostolic worship and other nominal worship is that it involves your whole spirit, soul, and body. You can't sing a Pentecostal praise song like this. Tell your neighbor, that won't work up in here. Look on the other side and tell them that won't work. Come on, clap your hands and show them what Pentecostal people look like when they praise the Lord. I come to clap my hand. 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 Some of you aren't clapping. You're just looking. Some of you aren't clapping. You're just looking. I come to lift him up. 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 I come to say hallelujah. 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 I come to do my dance. This section is still too stiff. I come to say amen. I come to say amen. I tell you, yeah, boy, amen. I come to say amen. I come to say it's well. I come to say it's well. Whatever you're going through, God told me to tell you it's well. No matter what the doctor said, I come to tell you it's well. No matter what the MRI said, I come to tell you it's well. 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 Come on and clap your hands. Are y'all praising him at home? You might be sitting on the couch, but I still want you to clap your hands. You might be sitting in the recliner, but hey, glory, pat your feet. See that I'm a higher, sitting at the kitchen table. Hallelujah. I want everybody to say this like me and the praise team. Yes, he can. Let's lift it up. He can. Say it one more time. Whatever you're going through. Whatever you're facing, say it. Yeah. He, can. He, can. he can. He can. He can. He can. He can. He can. Before the day is over. He can. Before the clock strikes midnight. He can. He can. He can. Help me say yeah. yeah. Look around there and tell three people, I got better news than that. Yes, he will. I said, yes, he will. I said, yes, he will. All I need is about 50 people to agree with me. And wave your hand and say, yes, he will. Let me hear the church just say with a loud voice, Jesus, you brought me from a mighty long way. Is that anybody's testimony this morning? 
And I have good news, God is not through blessing you. The blessings of the Lord be upon you here in the sanctuary and wherever you're watching in the United States and around the world. I want to welcome you to this Sunday morning worship celebration emanating from Calvary Ministries International here in the city of God in Youngstown, Ohio. And wherever you're watching today, I want you to like, to share, to comment. Let me know where you're watching from. And saints, I want you to help me welcome the viewing audience to the service on today and you at home. Type these words in the comment section. Let me hear you say it with a loud voice. You belong here. Come on, send that word down your row and tell everybody on your row, you belong here. And what a special, special day it is for Calvary to be blessed of the Lord to have in the midst of our worship service today the dynamic, distinguished, anointed, visionary, diocesan of the greatest council in the Pentecostal assemblies of the world, the Ohio District Council. I want you to welcome this morning with a tremendous Calvary welcome, the Honorable Bishop James Gators of Columbus, Ohio. Come on, just a little more for our bishop. Stretch your hand toward the bishop and say, Bishop, we're glad you're here. Seated behind our bishop is members of my family all the way from Davenport, Iowa. I want you to welcome Pastor Tom and Pastor Stephanie who have just come to be with us in service today celebrating their anniversary. Give them a big welcome to Youngstown today. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We're moving expeditiously and I will not extend the time today. I have a brief word I'll share with you from the word of the Lord, but before the morning message, those of you that are in the service lies and those of you that are watching, Jesus didn't bring you this far to leave you. He that hath begun a good work in you shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. I just want to ask Mother Savage before we preach today to come and encourage someone. Bless your heart and bless this house. As Mother Savage is coming this morning to minister before the morning message. Jesus, you brought us a mighty long way. Give Mother Savage a good God bless you as she comes. Oh, my. 
your mercy. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for keeping my family. Thank you, Lord, you brought me from a mighty. If he brought you, why don't you praise him? God bless your mother. God bless you a little more. God bless your mother. If you're able to stand in reverence to the reading of the Holy Scripture, we're in Acts chapter 19, verse number 13. This has been a tremendous week and tremendous weekend at Calvary. A number of graduations. We celebrate all of our graduates, every one of you. God bless you in your academic pursuits. As long as you continue to keep God first, you will be successful in everything you endeavor to do. We celebrate our graduates and we're praying for your continued success to all of the families that are experiencing grief in the loss of loved ones. We're praying for the healing of your spirit, heart, and mind. Minister Leisha Salters and all those who have lost loved ones, the Lord strengthen you and heal your hearts. Praying for the families in Buffalo, New York where a young man under the influence of Satan murdered some 11 individuals yesterday at a grocery store in Buffalo, New York, a racially motivated situation. We have to bind this spirit in the name of Jesus Christ, praying for those families, praying for all of the sick and shut in that are watching today you may be shut in, but you're not shut out. The Spirit of God comes to minister to you today, wherever you are. And for just a few moments this morning, before we go to the scripture, I want to say to the Calvary family everywhere, and we have a number of saints that are out of town on today, uh, various celebrations, time with family, graduations, things of that nature. This is important and valuable time that we're spending with our families. But now that it's getting a little warm and God is blessing us to come out of hibernation, we're not going to put God and church on the back burner. As we move now into the spring and the summer season, I want everyone to look at your neighbor and tell them keep worship on your summer schedule. This is not to say that you should not take personal time, not to say that you shouldn't go vacationing, 
but when we're home we should be in the house of God if we're physically able to do so and I'm so glad to see those of you that are here on this morning the text is Acts chapter 19 and verse number 13 reading from the King James Version of the Holy Scriptures we're reading together aloud both here in the sanctuary at home Acts 19 and verse 13 let us read please then certain of the vagabond Jews exorcists took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus saying we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth verse 14 and there were seven sons of one Seba a Jew and chief of the priests which did so 15 and the evil spirit answered and said Jesus I know Paul I know but who are you I want to preach a few minutes this morning from the subject who are you who are you father speak to us and may your word bring life in Jesus name amen thank you you may be seated in the presence of the Lord who are you? As we survey the contextual environment of our text, we learn that on his second missionary journey, Paul had visited Ephesus briefly as he was going from Corinth to Syria, Antioch. Members of the Jewish synagogue in Ephesus had requested that Paul remain and continue to teach there. But he advised them he would return at a later time if the Lord so willed. In our text today, we have excerpts of Paul's third missionary journey. We see this beginning in chapter 18 of the book of Acts, verses 22 and 23, the scriptures indicating that he had came by land to Ephesus, prepared to remain and minister there at length. Paul returns to the same synagogue where he had taught previously in Ephesus. He teaches there a period of three months concerning the principles of the kingdom of God. One of the umbrella phrases for the way of Christ is the kingdom of God. You will also see it referred to as the kingdom of heaven. Jesus himself used that phrase in several of his parables. And in Luke chapter 16 and verse 16, Jesus said the law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached, and every man presseth into it. The saints of old used to say this is a pressing way. I press toward the mark. Jesus uses the analogy of a kingdom to emphasize the sovereign rule of God not just over all the earth as creator, but more specifically as Lord in the individual lives of those who are spiritually born again into the kingdom of God by means 
of the twofold baptism of water and spirit. Oh, I should remind you that it's going to take both to enter in. Water and spirit. Jesus said in the third chapter of John, Verily, verily, surely, surely, a double emphatic, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and the Spirit, he cannot see, verse number three, or enter, verse five, into the kingdom of God. Friend, you can't join the apostolic church. You must be born into the kingdom of God. A kingdom has a king. A kingdom has laws. It has subjects or citizens. A kingdom has a culture. A kingdom has an economy. A kingdom has an army and consists of land or territory. Paul was teaching that these aspects of a kingdom will be of a different nature in the kingdom of God as compared to the kingdoms of this world inasmuch as Jesus said, in the 18th chapter of John, my kingdom is not of this world. In Paul's teachings to the Romans, he said, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. It took a little longer in Ephesus, but Eventually, the Jews, who were obstinate to the doctrine of Christ, began to agitate, as they had in most of Paul's experiences of preaching Jesus. And I want to say to young preachers everywhere that you cannot preach the biblical Jesus and not aggravate somebody this one size fits all Jesus that we often hear being preached today is not the Jesus we see represented in the teachings of the Apostles the biblical Jesus requires a separation from the world the biblical Jesus requires transformation of the mind. And many individuals are uncomfortable with what God requires because it requires the relinquishing of our will in the interest of the will of God. As had occurred in other places, Paul was forced to leave the synagogue in Ephesus to find another place to begin to exhort and instruct new converts and persuade others to become disciples of Jesus Christ. Sometimes it becomes necessary to depart from man-made religious institutions in order to have an authentic, life-changing spiritual encounter with Jesus Christ. I want to submit to the church on this morning that we should only be interested in being affiliated with a local church as long as Jesus is there. That has to be the prerequisite for my continued presence in that place. Friends, I want you to understand that the manifest presence of God is not always perpetually resident 
in every place he once resided. The scripture teaches us in 1 Samuel chapter 4 that when the Philistines captured the ark of God with the tragic death of Eli and his two treacherous sons, Hophni and Phinehas ensuing, that Phinehas' wife, went into labor upon hearing of the death of her father-in-law and husband. But when you take a closer look at that text, what really seemed to have triggered her great travail was when she heard the news that the ark of God was taken. The ark represented the presence of God in the midst of his people. The scripture said that she named the child born Ichabod, saying the glory is departed from Israel because the ark was taken. Friend, if you're watching this webcast today and attending a church where the spirit of Jesus is no longer resident, you need a new church. Some may reasonably ask, well, Pastor Tyson, how can I be certain that Jesus is in my church? The scripture gives an answer to that question. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 17, the word of the Lord declares where the spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty. I've come to announce with gladness today that you can receive whatever it is that you need from God. And you can receive it before you walk out of the doors of Mount Calvary because the Spirit of the Lord is in this place right now. If you go to church every week depressed and leave depressed, something is wrong if you go every week sad and leave sad something is missing if you go every sunday stressed and leave stress something is off if you come every week addicted and week after week and month after month and year after year never experienced deliverance from that addiction. Jesus must have vacated the premises because you cannot be continually exposed to the authentic presence of God and remain the same. The psalmist said, In thy presence is fullness of joy. The reason why some of you have not experienced a direct encounter with God in the hour that you've been in the sanctuary this morning is because you have not yet engaged God in the prerequisite that he required for access to his presence. He said come before his presence with singing. Some of you said well I, I'm not a singer. I can't hold a tune in a bag. Music is not my field of expertise. But I'm happy to report this morning that you don't have to be able to sing like a bird like Mother Savage. You can just make a joyful noise unto the Lord. God understands the language of a heart that is broken. God knows what it means when you lift your hands. Unspoken expressions of worship and submission to the sovereignty of God. But the requirement is that you have to open your own mouth. And you have to lift up your own soul before God in a personal presentation of your love for God and his goodness unto you. I don't want you to get lost this morning 
in the corporate worship experience and feel as though it is acceptable for you to sit among the hundreds of worshipers and not offer unto God your personal worship. Even though there are hundreds of us in this sanctuary, I've come to tell you this morning that God is going to meet your need specifically. God's going to come right to the very precipice of your greatest pain, your greatest sorrow, and your greatest struggle. But before God does that which you need from him, he's going to need you to give him what he needs from you. He said, enter my gates with thanksgiving and my courts with praise, not with style, not with arrogance, not with indifference, not with cool and calm and debonair. Sometimes you have to sacrifice your poise to receive what it is you need from God. And when you get to that place, you won't care what anybody thinks about how you praise your God. I'm just curious, is there anybody in the service that needs something that only God can give? Hata, oh, come on here, help me, Jesus. I want you to just nudge somebody next to you and tell them I, I can't speak for you, but I'm going to get what I need from the Lord on this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. And at his right hand, glory, our pleasures forevermore. Almost finished now. And in the 19th chapter of Acts in verse number 9, after they kicked Paul out of the synagogue, the scripture said he moves his teaching to the school of Tyrannus. School here indicating a place of discussion and debate. Now this would suit Paul's evangelistic objectives very well. It would be a more inclusive setting for Gentiles to hear and learn the gospel from him. He did not have, come on Holy Ghost, the institutionalized religious opposition that he had to deal with in the synagogue. The first thing that some of you have to get delivered from to get your food deliverance is church folk. That's the first thing that you've got to learn how to get delivered from. Some of the most sophisticated witches and warlocks are in the church because they are manipulators of the atmosphere. They try to use their body language and their facial expressions to try to hinder you from offering God the sacrifice of praise. But I come to tell every witch and warlock, you can pull out a blanket, a bed, and a pillow and lay down in the floor of this sanctuary. There's nothing you're going to do that's going to block me from giving God glory and praise on today. For about 15 seconds, let the worshipers show the witches who's in charge. Hallelujah. I want you to send a word down your row. I'm going to praise him today. Yeah, have your seat for a minute. I got to come. Oh, shit, am I? Yeah. 
I got to bring this on in. Uh, Brother Nwanko, uh, he did not have to deal with the institutionalized uh, religious opposition that he had uh, among the scribes uh, and the Pharisees. Uh, and in the school of Tyrannus, uh, Paul carries forth uh, this ministry for two years uh, with a dynamic, uh, far-reaching outreach uh, into all of Asia Minor. Oh, I'm glad you came to church today. This was the right service to be in on this morning. Now, in addition to his revelatory spiritual teaching and preaching, God had equipped Paul's ministry, uh, Dad Barbour, with something that we need now more than ever. We need ministries uh, with signs following. Uh, we need it now. Uh, we need more than sermons. Uh, we need signs following. Uh, we need more than theology. Uh, we need signs following. Uh, we need more than philosophy. Uh, we need signs uh, following. Uh, Authentic apostolic ministry should have some Just nudge somebody and tell them you better get ready to praise him like you've never been praising him before because a blessing is behind you. About half the church that went right here. I said, nudge somebody uh, and tell them you better prepare your best praise because there's a blessing you've been praying for that's creeping up on you. And the sooner you release a praise in the atmosphere, it's going to chase you down. I come to praise him. Oh, oh. Yes, a ministry with signs following. Now, have your seat for a minute. I'm almost there. And the Bible says in Mark chapter 16 and verse number 17, and these signs shall follow them that believe you don't have to go into all the details of what it is that you need from the lord today but at least do this just lift your voice and shout i believe god that's all that needed that's all needed don't need a whole dissertation don't need a whole lot of talking don't need a whole lot of explanation just need somebody that believe that in my name they shall katana share they shall cast out devils they shall speak with new tongues they shall take up servants and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them. They shall lay a hand on the sick. Yeah. I wish you just believe God yeah. and tell your neighbor, yeah. you shall recover. <laughs> Let me ask y'all a question. Now, uh, because Bishop, I have been so sick that I thought myself I never get well. Uh, there's some people in here today uh, that have been dealing with something for years and years uh, and you have resolved, well, I'm just gonna have to deal with it. Uh, well, because God is still God. Uh, I come out this morning for those uh, who won't wait for the praise team to praise him to tell you God sent me out here today to tell you, you shall recover. Three people in your section. I'm going to bounce back from this. Oh, yeah, I'm going to bounce back from this. Uh, they shall recover. Uh, 
Hallelujah. That word is walking up and down the aisles. It's all over the airwaves. It's all in hospital rooms. It's all in nursing home. It's all in bedroom. You're going to recover from that divorce. You're going to recover from that bankruptcy. You're going to recover from that disappointment. You're going to recover from the loss of your spouse. You're going to recover from the loss of your child. You're going to recover from the loss of your job. You're going to recover from the repossession of that car. You're going to recover from the foreclosure on that house. And because God cannot lie, he's going to give you back double everything that you thought you lost. I wish somebody would give God a Job praise. Paul had a signs following ministry. Five more minutes, saints. Uh, and the scripture said, thank you, Lord. In Acts 19 and 11, oh, praise him. Lord, I'm glad I'm in Mount Calvary. Yeah, because the Lord said, Sean, I want you to tell the saints, uh, I'm not just going to do miracles today. I'm going to do special miracles. Uh, and you see that's right there in the scripture. In verse number 11, uh, the scripture said, God wrought special miracles uh, by Tana Moshe, uh, by the hands of Paul uh, so that from his body uh, how many remember the lady evangelist Mildred boy let me see your hand uh, she would have those prayer cloths uh, she would take them and sleep with them close to her body uh, for several weeks while she was fasting uh, then in revival she would come back and give those prayer cloths to the saints uh, that's biblical from his body and were brought handkerchiefs and aprons. And when that anointed cloth touched the body of the sick and afflicted, the scripture said the disease departed from them and evil spirits went out from them. I come to Jesus every day demon now, out of your house on this morning now I've come to tell the devil now, he has no authority now, over your children over your grandchildren now, over your workplace over your spirit now, over your mind and your body now, I've come to serve an eviction notice now, on every unclean spirit now, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Now, God used uh, these special miracles uh, in Ephesus uh, to distinguish, have your seats, uh, to distinguish the superior power. Uh, let me hear Calvary shout, superior power. Well, not to say that the devil don't have no power, but I come to tell you that uh, the Holy Ghost uh, is the superior power and he gives Paul special miracles to distinguish the superior power of the Holy Ghost from the spiritual powers at work in the city of Ephesus the city of Ephesus was overrun with witchcraft and spiritism it was devoted to magic and to the occult and to the arts if I be a man of God, the Lord told me to tell you to immediately dispose of those tarot cards and that Ouija board. As soon as you get home from church, you don't need minimal information from the kingdom of darkness when the spirit of all knowledge dwells inside of you. Oh, Ephesus was devoted to witchcraft. Uh, Deacon Wagner, the city that we would most likely compare Ephesus to uh, in modern U.S. culture would be New Orleans. Uh, as far as we know, these arts uh, included the divining uh, of the palms of the hands, uh, reading signs uh, in a diversity of other ways. Uh, it included to speaking to various different kinds of spirits. Uh, uh, necromancy, uh, dealing with dead folk, uh, uh, drawing magical powers uh, from numbers, from uh, mixtures of potions, uh, amulets, incantations, uh, and other objects. Uh, 
I submit to you uh, that there is more witchcraft uh, operative in the United States uh, than there has ever been uh, in the history of the world uh, because of the access to people's spirits, minds, and bodies uh, through social media. Uh, these spirits uh, are being electronically transmitted uh, into your home uh, through your telephone, uh, through your iPad, through your smart device. Uh, you ought to anoint your cell phone. Uh, every day yeah, and tell the Lord any message that originated out of hell uh, shall not affect my spirit mind or body yeah. shout hallelujah in here uh, send a word up and down your row uh, because some of that stuff got attached to some of you uh, on this week uh, and just tell them uh, like sister Van's story used to say loose here in the name of Jesus. Uh, the scripture says uh, in this setting uh, were itinerant Jews. Uh, the scripture describes them as exorcists uh, and they took it upon themselves uh, to call over them uh, which had evil spirits uh, the name of the Lord Jesus saying, we adjure you by Jesus uh, whom Paul preached. Uh, well, it's the last part uh, of their incantation. It's not a prayer. It's an incantation. It's when they said, we adjure you by Jesus who Paul preaches uh, that alerted uh, that spirit to the fact uh, that these seven boys, uh, these seven sons of the priests uh, did not know uh, who Jesus was uh, personally. Uh, just quickly ask your neighbor, oh, by the way, who are you? Uh, uh, they had some, uh, they had some secondhand knowledge uh, of the miracles that Paul uh, had been working in the name uh, of the Lord Jesus. Uh, not understanding, son, uh, that the authority and power of the name of Jesus uh, only works in conjunction with your relationship to uh, and your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, you cannot experience uh, special miracles uh, without having gone through uh, special suffering. Uh, and the Bible says uh, in John chapter 15 uh, and verse number 7, uh, if ye abide in me uh, and uh, my words uh, abide in you, uh, ye shall ask what you will uh, and ikanda uh, shebohoke uh, holy ghost come in my house uh, on yesterday through the words of the prophet uh, and said brother-in-law uh, tomorrow morning when you stand up before the saints of God uh, I come all the way from Davenport Iowa uh, to tell the saints God said uh, all they have to do is ask and I'll do it. Well, I've come this morning to ask who has the faith to believe God to do special miracles. Well, I got to get ready, 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 ready to leave the air today. But before I leave the air, I want you to know that you cannot invoke the name of Jesus uh, with no sincerity, uh, no covenant relationship, uh, no spiritual transformation, uh, no divine authentication uh, as a son of God uh, and expect to have uh, supernatural deliverance.
perish. Yes, the sons of Siva, they were the sons of the priest, but they were not sons of God. Apparently, they had grown up around some type of religious infrastructure. They were like many of us. They grew up around the church, but they did not internalize the life-giving word of God. And as a result of their failure, to ingest and apply the word. They did not possess the yoke destroying, burden lifting, mountain moving, demon rebuking, mind transforming, dunamis of the Holy Ghost. As a result of this, this evil spirit, I identify them as a fraud and exploited their religious hypocrisy and the spirit it began to talk and say Jesus I know Paul I know but who are you well my time is up and I got to leave you now but just one more time lean on a neighbor and say hey neighbor I just want to ask you one more time who are you well let me answer for the church since I'm the one that got the mic and if I'm answering right I want you to give God a praise how many can say I am a child of God for the Bible said in Galatians 3 and 26 for you are all the children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Let me ask the saint this morning, how many can testify and say, I am blessed. I thought I'd hear more noise in the house than that. Lay your hand on your neighbor's shoulder and say, hey neighbor, give me about 30 seconds to remind you how blessed you are. Tell them you're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the field. You're blessed when you go out. You're blessed when you come in. You're blessed in the fruit of your body. You're blessed in your spirit. You're blessed in your mind. You're blessed in your money. You're blessed to be a saint. You're blessed to be a son. You're blessed to be in the house of God. And tell your neighbor, I am, I am alive. The devil tried to kill me, but I When we were dead in sin and trespass, he quickened us and by grace ye are saved. Stretch a hand toward another worshiper and tell him I am loved by God. I am precious in his sight. I am an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Tell them I am redeemed. I got to close now. I'm rushing here, but I'm going to close. Now, tell at least three people like you know what you're talking about. I am delivered. Shout glory, shout glory, shout hallelujah. Lift your hand and say, I am delivered. Let me go a little higher. Lift your voice and say, I 
am delivered. Go on up there a little higher and say, I am delivered. Bishop Gators, I've been doing my best to comport myself in some kind of degree of apostolic nobility and diplomacy because the bishop is in the pulpit. But I gotta be me for about two minutes and just praise him the way I feel. I've been kinda trying to hold it back just a little bit. But I have to say one more thing. Who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. This is only for the people that don't mind what they look like. Giving God praise if you'll stretch out on the word. Your deliverance will hit your house by next Sunday morning. I'm going to give you two minutes to praise him like it's already there. Oh, Lord, deliver my children. Oh, Lord, deliver my grandchildren. Oh, Lord, deliver my mind. Oh, Lord. Deliver my soul. Oh Lord, heal my body. Oh Lord, move this mountain. Oh Lord, fulfill your promise. You got about 30 more seconds to let the devil know who you are. Beloved, now are we the sons of God? And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. Ah, don't look like what I've been through. Everyone standing. Who are you? Who are you? You can't make this journey on borrowed faith. You got to get some knowledge of God for yourself of who God is and what God can do. Some of you have lived your, almost your whole life off what mama and them said and what big mama and grandpa and bishop and the under shepherds but with what you're going through you're gonna need to know him for yourself the altars come here ministers come this won't take long this won't take long key of f this won't take long I need everyone to focus here. Listen, the Lord told me to tell you before I leave this pulpit, he whom the Son sets free is free indeed. I don't care how long you've been bound or what you have been struggling with. The Spirit of God is here to set you free. Friend, you do not have to carry this weight, that sin, 
that burden that guilt not one more day if you've been bound in your mind if you've been bound by the opinion of people if you have been bound to guilt for previous failures if you're bound to some substance some habit some tendency some proclivity anything that is prohibiting you from experiencing the fullness of the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. You got to do it quickly. I don't care what it is or how long it's been. If you will be free, hit this altar as quickly as your feet can get you here and move right now. Move right now. Move right now. Don't you worry about who's looking at you. Don't you worry about what they say. Don't you worry about what they think. I want my peace. I want my joy. I want my family. I want my mind. I want my focus. Quickly, quickly, quickly. I can't labor with you long this morning. About five minutes. Those of you that are watching online, I want you to call the number on the screen, area code 330-747-4445. Call that number on the screen right now. The power of God is able to deliver you. The minister is waiting right now to pray with you. If you have not been baptized in Jesus' name, come and tell the minister. If you have not received the Holy Ghost speaking with other tongue, have the Spirit give the utterance, come and tell the minister. Sing one line of this hymn with me, saints, before you take your seats. Nobody walking, unless it is an extreme emergency. I want everyone to remain to receive and hear from our bishop. But I want you to sing one line of this hymn with me. It reaches to the highest mountain and it flows, and it flows to the lowest to the mountain. Low Every day, from day, from day to day, today, you may have your seats everywhere. There's still time. Come on. There's still time. Oh, it will reach you to the high. Call that number on the screen. And it to the Lord. I want you to call me right now. That number on the screen. 330-747-4445. Don't leave this service. Don't log off until you let us pray with you. Call me right now. God can deliver you, and he will do it if you trust him. Just one more time. It reaches to the highest Lord, bless your children. And it goes to the lowest mountain. Won't you wave your hand in the air? Oh, the blood that gives me strength. Oh, from day to day. It's 
If you're delivered and glad about it, give God the best praise you gave him today. The blood that give me strength from Glory. glory can't hear you shout glory oh glory thank you all to evangelists oh it's all right now the power of the name and the power of the blood is working on your behalf how many here know that God cannot lie? I actually thought I was in Mount Calvary. I'm going to try this here again. I said, how many know that God cannot lie? The Lord told me to tell you the first 50 saints that will jump on the floor and give God a praise. Special miracles are coming your way. Got a feeling everything's gonna be all right. Oh, I got a feeling everything's gonna be all right. Oh, 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 God bless you, have your seat. Say it with a loud voice. Say, as we give our tithes and offerings, we declare and decree jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements. Bishop, I'm coming, but I just saw 30 saints that got their house paid off by the end of the year. I'm gonna give them 30 seconds to praise God for it. Everybody say estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and good surprises, finding money, debts paid off. Say this with a strong voice, Ohio District Council Campground, paid in full. Say thank you, Lord, for supplying all our financial needs and the needs of our church and family. I declare I am blessed to be a blessing. And this is my year for supernatural favor. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. I lay awake at night, and that's all right. I know Jesus. I know Jesus. I know Jesus. Right now. God bless.
bless you. You may have your seat. That's it. God bless you. Those of you that are in need of a contribution envelope, just lift your hand. Wherever you're sitting in need of a contribution envelope, those of you that did not receive your contribution envelope when you were coming into the service, lift your hand right now. Woo, glory. <laughs> Glory to God. Don't do it, John. Don't do it. I might not be able to. Come, John, don't do it. Might not be able to get it back. God bless you. Those of you that are watching online, we're worshiping God today in tithes and offering. We're worshiping God today in tithes and offering. The Lord blessed us to bless our mothers on last Sunday, and that's good. And the Lord continue to bless all of our mothers but today, let's come on back and bring the Lord his tithe and his offering on today. So we're looking for 100% tithing today. And saints, this is what I want to ask you to do for the church. I'm going to ask you today, everyone that can, I need you to come as close to a $50 free will offering for the church as you can today. We're going to receive some additional instructions from our bishop in just a moment concerning a tremendous opportunity for kingdom building that Mount Calvary is participating in and I want you to make sure you honor the Lord with the kingdom 10 bless his name the first 10% of our income and our increase and that special offering now before I leave the air just want to remind the Calvary family everywhere uh, Tuesday midday manna noonday Bible study I have a special treat for you in noonday Bible study on Tuesday and if you don't come you're gonna be so disappointed that you missed this special treat now the evening Bible study you will be able to watch that class at 7 p.m., but I want to see that downstairs auditorium filled with noonday students. I got a special treat for you this coming Thursday night, May 19th, sanctuary prayer from 6 to 7. Had over 100 saints in prayer on this past Thursday night. Let's keep it going before God in prayer, Thursday 6 to 7, and then following, the Women's Ecclesia will be meeting at 7 p.m. This coming Saturday, May 21st, the Women's Ministry, Sister Sheila Brantley will be hosting a tea party this coming Saturday at 11.30 a.m. And before the bishop comes, help me celebrate Mother Drayton, Sister Sonia Martin, Sister Trina Thompson, Sister Ernestine Towns, who are all celebrating birthdays on today. Mother Drayton, you look pretty back there in that powder blue. Help me celebrate today's birthdays. I'll be looking forward to joining you tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. with the First Lady at Mount Calvary Pentecostal Church Facebook Live. And just in case anybody asks you, what is our estimation of Jesus Christ? You tell everybody everywhere, he's all right. He's all right. He's just all right. Come on, clap your hands while we leave the air today.